Discord have just made a massive change to their overlay and now you should actually get better frames in all games if you have the Discord overlay enabled versus before this update with the Discord overlay enabled. First though, prepare yourself for a flashbang. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Game Overlay 101, which was very recently updated on Discord. This tells you everything about the new Discord game overlay, which we'll be going through in just a moment, the new features and things like that. But the main difference is how the Discord overlay is rendered. Previously, this Discord overlay was injected into your game through use of a hook. It added extra input latency and actually caused your frame rate to drop while you have the Discord overlay enabled. But now there's been a massive change in how the Discord overlay is rendered. So if you actually have the in-game overlay enabled, you can expect better performance out of every game across the board now versus before, as long as you had the Discord overlay enabled then versus now with the Discord overlay enabled. So let's get into the brand new changes. First of all, you'll obviously need to update Discord. Unfortunately, if you don't see an update button in the top right, what you need to do is from your start menu, expand the hidden icons, right click Discord and choose quit Discord, then restart it from your start menu as such. And while it's launching up, you should see that updates are downloaded. Once they have, oh, all the icons on the side have been adjusted. There's some new things here. I don't necessarily know if I like this, but Discord has now been updated. If we head across to user settings, followed by scrolling all the way down to game overlay, here we can customize the brand new overlay. So say hello to the new overlay. In order to use the new overlay, we need to set our game to borderless windowed. Full screen, it'll probably inject into your game and display as it does previously, such as the EA app overlay, Ubisoft overlay, Steam overlay, and stuff like that. This draws a separate window and does its magic there, much more similar to the Xbox game bar overlay if you've used any of those before. So to start off, we'll make sure the overlay is enabled and we'll make sure the legacy overlay is disabled. This way we'll get much better performance in all games versus the old rendering technique. Then scrolling down, we've got the same keybinds as before. I have my overlay toggle to shift tilde. We can enable overlay clickable regions, which essentially allows you to click notifications when they pop up. This might be a good thing, but if you're playing in RTS or point and click and you happen to click a notification, it'll likely toggle the overlay. So you might want to disable that in that case. The voice widget is just this thing that appears in the corner. We can adjust the avatar size, large and small, and whether to display names always or just when people are speaking or never if you know people's images. At the very bottom, we can change notifications for messages, going live, game activity, and now playing. With all of these settings as is, all we need to do is get in game and set our game to borderless windowed. Let's try this out. Let's go into a rather demanding game like Rust. And already you can see in the top left, we've got check out the Discord overlay and a friend that I think was currently in game. I missed that. Hitting shift tilde to open the brand new Discord overlay. That's my hotkey. You can see this thing is completely different to what it was before. We now have modular blocks that we can move around the place. This isn't centered for some reason on my system. And we have the option to pin or unpin items to show them in game or not. We also have notifications in the top left, voice, video, streams in the bottom right, and activity over here. Not to mention this new bar up here. So what exactly is everything and how does it work? Let's start off with notifications. Obviously, we have a settings button below each of these, which allows us to customize certain things and of course make them work more in the way that we'd expect. For notifications, I'll just leave them enabled in game by having the pin icon ticked and I'll send myself a message from a different Discord account. So I'm sending myself a message you'll see it pop up in game on the top left and we can hit the hotkey to start responding to it so I can say hi back to myself bam there we go just like that I've now responded without even needing to tab out also if we send ourselves a message and have that specific option ticked we can just click this thing and start responding to it immediately you can see why if you had this in the bottom corner you tried to click the map or something this could be an issue in certain games but again you can change that option from over here unfortunately for some reason we don't have the same luxury inside of our discord overlay anyways then next we have the voice block and this one if we join a call so I'll just call myself here you can see it pops up I'll join a call and right now we've got this over here which is me speaking to myself on an alt account ignore the confusing name difference but I'm speaking here 
and on that account too. This is in a bit of a weird place, so I think I'll just swap its location with notifications to bring it closer to what Discord used to be like, and now you can see it in the top left. I can customize this to make them large or smaller, as well as display names only of those who are speaking. So muting my alt, you can only see mine now until both of us are unmuted as such. I can also only display users when they're speaking, so obviously it's me and my alt account, but muting my alt account, now it's just me. Then looking further down, we've gone video in the bottom left, which also has its own settings. So for example, showing our own camera, horizontal layout and opacity here. If I use this brand new block at the very top to enable my camera, just like that, you can now see I'm streaming my camera in the bottom left. Here I am. And of course, if my old account turns on their camera, you'll see it here too. If we close this overlay, it's in the bottom left or wherever you place it as you'd hope. Clicking it doesn't do anything. We can also change the opacity to halfway. So now it's much less obvious on top of whatever game we're playing or we're less distracting. And of course, horizontal layout. If we untick this, it makes it vertical, which is a bit strange but it's nice to see that it takes even less space now. And of course, we can choose to not show our own camera if you wish. And it just tells us that we're hiding our camera. It doesn't actually turn it off, which is an important note. I'll stop using my camera here or change the settings if we wish, such as turning off the background or customizing it. I'll make it this cat. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll turn off my camera and turn it off on my old too. Then we'll have a look at the bottom right, which is the streams option over here. Here we can change settings. Once again, horizontal layout and opacity, but we also have only show watched streams and the same pin icon. If my alt account starts streaming something, as I'm in a call, it's automatically started watching the stream, which you can see down here, fantastic content. And of course we can change the opacity and things like that as before. Not to mention, we can also make it a horizontal layout or vertical layout if there's multiple people sharing their screen at once as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't crop the camera much like it does with our video camera too. But I suppose if you're sharing your screen, you'll probably wanna see the whole thing anyways. You can also from here, toggle the mute of the stream by clicking this icon here and click the three dots to change stream volume, zoom, and things like that. Increasing the zoom just makes it bigger in this window. It doesn't actually resize it, which I think is a very much needed feature, especially if you're on larger displays and these blocks get rather small. For now, at least there's not much we can do about that. I'll stop watching this stream. You can see it says watch, giving us a notification that we can start watching it. And that's that. Finally, this block over here, activity, not too sure what it is, but we can see people who've recently played the game. Currently, it's just my fiance who played it six days ago. There were more people, so I'm not sure why they're not showing up there, but there you go. We can also choose to message them to invite them to play. Clicking this invites your friend to Rust or whatever game you're playing here, as you can see. Finally, going through the options at the very top with this block over here, you can obviously mute or unmute yourself, deafen, undeafen yourself, toggle your video, toggle your screen sharing, which is also a fantastic option. Click this, bam, you're live in whatever game your overlay is currently active in, but for some reason it seems to turn off my ability to capture it using OBS, which is really weird, but anyways, that's a thing, so I'll need to turn this back on. Unfortunately, I can't show you creating a clip, but just by hitting Alt-C, which is my clipping key in Discord, it gives me a pop-up over here saying clip created, and that's pretty much that. Previously in Discord, in the bottom left, you'll see a pop-up saying a clip was created, and that still happens, but that same bit of information and the little screenshot doesn't pop up in the in-game overlay. Expanding this, you obviously have options to change your FPS, resolution, and things like that, but unfortunately, I just can't show you that in video. Finally, the last option here is the soundboard, and now you can annoy your friends with sounds without even needing to tab out or binding them to a hotkey. So that's pretty cool. And finally, we can choose to disconnect from the call, voice chat, or whatever, and from the drop down here, even choose a different Discord to join. So if I leave this and click the connect button, we can choose any Discord to join or any Discord channel. And when we do, just like that, you'll now be in a Discord and you can see some information at the bottom, such as the channel on the far right, the Discord server, and on the far left, your connection, voice details, as well as the little ping icon and things like that. Super useful and especially useful now that it's all built into the Discord overlay. Not to mention, you'll get even better performance now than before. So if I join the call that I was in previously, you can see everything in the top left. Let's enable a FPS overlay and move this somewhere a bit more. Good, there we go. Now let's actually join a server and see our FPS impact. 
So, joining a relatively popular Rust server, I'm standing here on the beach with a solid 100 FPS, so I'll start capturing my performance and we'll leave the benchmark going just for some solid numbers. There we go. Now, I'll head back to Discord, Settings, Game Overlay, and let's enable the Legacy Overlay. And it seems I'll also need to change the Enable Overlay to unselect the game I'm currently in, so it only has the Legacy Overlay, and it seems like I may need to restart my game to get the old overlay working, as it's currently still using the new one. Not to mention, now I can also invite friends here, which invites them to the server that I'm currently playing in, if the game you're currently playing has built-in Discord support. And nope, it seems to still be the new overlay. Let's try and turn off the enable overlay for the game here, and enable only the legacy overlay here for the game, and it's still the new one. Restart. Now we should be using the old overlay only, and nope, it's still a new one. So it seems like this feature might be broken for now, so it just kind of is what it is. Off and back on maybe. Nope, seems like I can't benchmark performance here, which is pretty unfortunate, but you'll just have to take my word that I always recommended turning off the Discord overlay as it always comes with an FPS cost that sometimes was super noticeable, especially on low-end machines, and especially when the game is consuming everything it can, clawing for more, and Discord overlay is there to steal a bit of FPS, things like that. So I guess for now, I'll at least benchmark the FPS difference to not having the Discord overlay, even though I can't show you exactly what it was like before and the huge loss related there. So based off of just eyeballing it, I guess there's probably a small improvement with no overlay. So I've rerun the benchmarks and this is what came out. No overlay, I had 78.5 average FPS and with an overlay, the new overlay, I had 75.1. So there's a very small FPS cost here. However, compared to before, you could have seen a massive FPS drop of 20 to 30% based on your system and how much is being used in game. Obviously Rust is a super dynamic environment so it might not be the best place to test it, but previously there was a big cost in FPS, now there's almost nothing, which is huge. But anyways, I've covered pretty much everything you need to know about the brand new Discord overlay. Let me know if this video helped you. Thank you all for watching, my name has been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!